All right, good afternoon. Welcome to my post hike video. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the gear that uh, I carried um, at the end of the hike versus uh, my, my pre hike video where we went over um, all the stuff that I was taking and um, it sure has changed. So um, let's get into it. So this is the pack that um, I took um, in the second half of the hike. If you remember the first half, I was carrying the uh, ULA circuit and that was a great pack. I carried that all the way up to um, Harper's Ferry in West Virginia and um, absolutely nothing wrong with the pack I, at all. Uh, the reason I changed it out was because it stunk so bad. It was horrible. It was really stinky. In fact, I came home for my son's high school graduation and my wife picked me up at the airport and I threw my pack in the trunk and about halfway home, she's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And she had to roll down all the windows because the smell just permeated the car. And I thought, well, maybe it's time for another pack. So I picked up this Granite Gear Blaze 60. Um, wasn't really sure how I would, how I would like it. Um, read the reviews on it and the reviews were great. And I got to tell you, this is an awesome, awesome pack. It's a little bit lighter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a little bit heavier, um, by maybe half a pound than the, uh, the ULA circuit, but the options for, um, cinching down your gear and, and storing your gears is, is just so much better. Um, I think I left with over a 20 pound base weight or maybe just right, I was right around 20 pounds. Um, base weight now with this pack, uh, with everything that I carried up to the summit is about 16 pounds. So it's very comfortable base weight for me, especially for this pack. This pack can carry 35, 40 pounds and, and still be comfortable. It's, uh, it's really an awesome pack. So. Um, let me show you, uh, what's in my pack and, and how I packed it. All right. First off, um, of course, uh, I got my Birkenstock camp shoes. These are great camp shoes, super lightweight, had them for the entire trip. Um, recommend them. Good to go. The only drawback is they don't have a closed toe and sometimes my, my toes would get wet, especially on, on a damp or a, a dewy morning. Um, but other than that, um, as far as weight goes and durability, these things held up fantastic. In my first video, um, you remember I had a sit pad and uh, I got rid of that in Fontana Dam. I just, I just wasn't using it. But in place of that, I got this. And uh, this is actually one of my favorite pieces of gear. This is... A closed cell foam pad, super lightweight, and it folds out pretty big. I actually found this in a uh, hiker box in Fontana Dam. That's uh, when I decided to, to give away my sit pad. And I could use this as a sit pad. I can use it as a uh, layer between my tent and my um, air mattress to keep uh, from it getting punctured. It has been an awesome piece of gear. This is the quarter inch version and it's been cut down. Uh, they also sell an eighth inch version, I think from Gossamer Gear, but uh, they're hard to come by. Um, they were out when I left and when I got back, they were out. So I was lucky enough to, lucky enough to score this in a hiker box in Fontana Dam. Love it. Uh, let's see, going into the top of the pack. A pillow. Remember my loadout video, I had that stuff sack pillow. It was okay. Um, but a blow up pillow, it's the way to go. This is the uh, Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight Regular. Tiny little pillow, but it blows up to about that big and maybe about that thick. Um, great little pillow. The, uh, the only thing I would do different is I would put Velcro on this pillow and on my pad to keep this pillow from sliding around because I had a tendency to do that. Um. I took all sorts of first aid stuff when I when I left. This is the extent of my first aid kit. And it was for most of the hike. Right there. I've got some Aleve, a nail clippers, tenacious tape, band-aids, a tick key, 
um, a needle, some medical tape, and some dental floss. That's it. And I hardly ever even broke into it. Remember I carried that big old pill bottle with all sorts of pills and stuff in it? Never opened it once. Sent it home in uh, West Virginia, I believe. This is all I carry for a first aid kit, and it was plenty. Um, my light. I changed this my light out. I had a black diamond um, Cosmo, I believe it was. And, uh, it, you know, it just wasn't bright enough. So this is the, uh, the Petzl Tika. Um, again, it's super, super bright. It was a great, great light. Um, other hikers had Petzl lights that were even brighter than this. Um, everything is gnarly bright. So, um, dug this light, Petzl Tika, recommend it. Long handle spoon. Um, I actually started off with a, a spork, but I didn't hardly eat much ramen at all. And that's the only reason that why I really needed a spork. Plus, I uh, actually ended up uh, giving it to another hiker who, who needed it. So, um, And I keep it in the top just because it's kind of long and and hard to, uh, hard to pack in my regular food bag. But uh, long handle titanium. So you can really get into the bottom of those dehydrated meals. Keeps your hands clean. Uh, let's see. Oh, my electronics back. This thing is a brick. And it has been from day one. Um, everything's been awesome in it. This is that 20 milliamp uh, anchor battery charger. This would last me about four days if I was really conservative, I could probably squeeze five, five and a half out of this. But I did use my phone a lot for filming and taking pictures. But uh, I could get by about maybe five, five and a half days max um, with keeping all of my devices charged with this 20 milliamp charger. Um, iPod. This is my second iPod. I uh, dropped my iPod on a rock and then it fell into a stream. <laughs> So I came home, got myself a second iPod. Um, and uh, yeah, there's that little two output anchor charger clutch. And I think a pair of headphones and a little charging cable. I started off with like three different charging cables and um, I found this in a hiker box and it's short. And it had all the little charging ends that I needed. So saved a little weight. That's my electronics bag. And that's it out of the top. Going actually into the pack. My food bag. Same food bag that I carried. Um, it's held up good. I think it developed a little hole in the side. But it's, it's that light AF Dyneema food bag. Uh, multiple bear hangs. Um, I put this thing through um, the rigors of the trail. And uh, yeah, I can still use it. It's still a good, solid bag. Um, my tent. Um, I used the same tent, the Nemo Dragonfly. And it was a great, great tent. Highly recommend it. Fantastic tent. Might be a little heavier than some of the ultralight tents. In fact, it is a little heavier. But um, it's freestanding, and that thing was absolutely bomb-proof. But the way I carried it changed uh, about halfway through the hike. Um, I would actually just stuff my tent with the fly and the footprint in my pack. And I'd kind of roll it up a little bit like this, but... Um, the reason I would stuff it in there because it was able to take up all the little nooks and crannies in my pack. And it actually made for a, uh, um, a much sleeker pack to carry. I didn't have this big old bulky tube I, I was carrying around the outside of my pack. Definitely the way to go. Um, tents, or I mean poles and stakes. What I do with those? I actually lash them to the side of my pack in the tent bag. The uh, stakes... And the poles are in here. So this went on the back. Tent went inside. Let's talk about tent stakes real quick. Uh, 
These are the Vargo Titanium Shepherd Hook Stakes. Right there. I started with about half of these and then half of, of the regular aluminum stakes. By the time I got done with the hike, exclu I just use these exclusively. Never failed me once. They're pretty durable. They will bend up if you only stick them halfway in and you step on them. Um, they will bend. But uh, other than that, they're super durable. I like this orange coating they have on the top. So they were um, pretty easy to find. In fact, um, I f half of the ones in this bag I actually found at uh, tent sites that people just left behind or whatever. Um, these aren't cheap. They're like $4 a pop. But uh, yeah, it's a great little tent steak. Uh, let's see. Next, my clothing bag. When I left, clothing was one of the heaviest things in my pack. Now, and this is what I would carry on the hike, my rain jacket, crucial piece of gear. I actually, uh, I had a different, I had the Arteryx rain jacket and I sent that home because I never really wore it and I got myself an umbrella and that umbrella was great um, throughout uh, Virginia, I should say West Virginia, um, Pennsylvania, New York. By the time it got to be summer and it wasn't raining that much, I sent that that umbrella home also. I was like, I don't really need it. But by the time I got up to uh, Vermont, um, I really needed an extra layer. And um, I got absolutely soaked one day. And so I actually picked this up. This is the, uh, the Mammoth. Um, I think I got this at EMS. It's just a basic Mammoth. Um, Rain jacket. The cool thing about it, it's got pit zips, which the Arcteryx did not. Key. Oh, let's see. Same old jacket that I started with, the uh, Rab Alpine Microlite. Um, great jacket. I actually did send this home once it got hot, and then uh, I had it sent back to me once I got up to Vermont because uh, it was starting to get cool. And it... Uh, Saved me, kept me warm um, throughout the entire trip. So, good deal. Oh, let's get back to my, let's get back to my uh, clothing bag. So, with the uh, the jacket, um, I had an extra merino wool shirt, and I would basically just keep this for when I was in town, when all my clothes were just absolutely stinky and, and dirty. It was nice when you went to do laundry or you're hanging out in a hostel or something before you can get your laundry done. It was nice to put on something clean that didn't just smell like death. So uh, short sleeve, smart wool, merino, t-shirt. Um, socks. I always carried at least three pair of socks. Darn toughs. One, two, and three. Clean, dry socks. Um, such a morale boost when you're out there. Highly recommend it. Uh, sleep clothes. I started off with this and I finished with this. This is a uh, Merino Wool Blend Mammoth um, tights. And uh, this was my sleep shirt. Again, started out with it and I kept it through the entire hike. This is a icebreaker, lightweight, long sleeve Merino shirt. Um, check out these little shorts. These are mammoths I picked up in uh, Vermont, I believe. Um, just little short shorts, like running shorts, whatever, um, to go along with my uh, uh, shirt that I would wear in the hostels. Just something clean to slip on while you're doing laundry. Super lightweight. Good deal. And, of course... Uh, there's an Osprey 12 liter bag that I would keep my clothes in, dry bag. Next, Thermarest sleep pad. I love this sleep pad. This is the uh, uh, Neo Air X-Therm. It's got like a 6.9 R value. Had it through the entire trip and not one puncture the entire time. It kept its air 
uh, might have a lot to do with the uh, the pad that I always use underneath it. But um, other hikers I was hiking with, they would end up with 12, 13, 15 holes and patches in their sleep pad. And they just, you know, kept patching it throughout the hike. And, and it worked for them. They were, they were able to get through. But I've never had to deal with that. Super durable, warm, great sleeping pad. Probably the most expensive pad out there, the Xtherm, but highly recommended. Great sleeping pad. Next is, ah, my, uh, my quilt. Once I got up to uh, West Virginia, um, I sent home my um, Western Mountaineering Versalite. It's a 10 degree bag. And it was getting to the point where I was starting to sweat at night. Um, it was kind of uncomfortable. So I picked up this REI. This is the um, Magma Trail Quilt 30. And I actually use this all the way to Maine, to the end of the hike. By, say, maybe the last week or 10 days, I had some chilly nights because it was getting down into the 40s. Um, but with the uh, the Extherm pad and my sleep clothes and this quilt, I might have gotten a little chilled, but I certainly was not cold, and I was able to sleep just fine. Um, it's a great introduction to quilts. Um, glad I bought it. I'm going to keep it. Use it again. Oh, let's see. Oh, Cook set. This is all I carried. This is the uh, MSR Titan Titanium Pot. Lighter, a Soto America stove. This actually used to have a uh, igniter on the side and that igniter failed after about two months. So I took it off and I just lit it with a lighter. But other than that, it has been a great, great little stove. And my fuel, it's all I would use to cook with. It's all I really needed. Um, in the mornings, Typically, I would uh, drink my coffee out of here. Um, and then if I would have anything else, I would put in there. For dinner, for example, um, I would mix up a bunch of Gatorade and drink it. Um, and then I would fill it up with uh, water and boil it if I needed water for dinner. Once I emptied that out, I would fill it back up with some more Gatorade or Propel or what have you, whatever I had. And I drink it out of here. I just needed really one pot. Um, it's been a good, a good little pot. Um, and that's it. That's all that is in my pack. Uh, side pockets, pack cover. This is the Sea to Summit Ultra Sill pack cover. Really, really good pack cover. Remember that poncho that I brought, and I thought, you know, this poncho is going to be so versatile. Man, I got rid of that thing in like North Carolina. It was awful. Bad idea. At least it was for me. What made me um, get rid of that poncho was uh, I was climbing Rocky Top and it was super rainy and the wind was just howling and lightning coming down. And I was wearing that poncho and it was so windy that it was just blowing that poncho all up over my face and off of my pack. I was trying to keep my pack covered with it and I was just fidgeting and fussing with it and it wasn't keeping me dry at all so finally um, I was on this ridge top and this big gust of wind came and blew that thing over my head and I was fighting trying to get it off my head and I finally got it off and there was a hiker sitting right next standing right next to me he's like dude what are you doing <laughs> and I go man I'm done with this poncho um, I ended up giving it away like that night and uh, I picked up this, uh, that pack cover in, uh, in the knock. Um, so, and I, and I did develop a couple of holes in that pack cover, but really it's cause I just throw off my pack, you know, on the pack cover and it would get kind of get scraped and, and marred up on the roots and the branches and the rocks. Um, it's not the pack cover's fault. I was just, uh, careless with it, but even, even with those holes, I would just patch it with tenacious tape. And it held up. Um, so, yeah. Oh, let's see. What else? Filter. Sawyer filter. 
I used this exclusively through the entire hike and it was great. This is not the original. I actually lost my original up in uh, New Hampshire while uh, hiking the, the whites. It actually, the bottle and the filter fell out of my pack because I was careless. Um, so the next day I was at a uh, hostel and I found this one in a hiker box. And I told myself, never trust a filter you find in a hiker box. There's a reason that it's in there, right? But it hasn't frozen in like forever. So I tried it out and I mean, it would barely come out. But the beauty about these things, and I guess the, the person that threw it in that hiker box didn't know, you can just kind of go like this and then back flush it with clean water and it would back flush all the filth and grime and nastiness that gets clogged up in, in the membrane in this filter. And honestly, it took me about a half an hour of pounding this thing and back flushing it. But finally, I got it to run clear and it works like a champ. It's a great filter. A lot of people use the Cadenin uh, B-Freeze, which is also a really, really good filter. Um, I just prefer the Sawyer. I think that that's it. That's everything that was in my pack. Let's talk about footwear real quick. When I started, I started off with uh, with Keen, uh, the Targi 2, I believe, um, hiking boots. And uh, they were great boots. They held up. My first pair held up um, probably for like a thousand miles. Um, and they didn't delaminate or fall apart. Uh, really good boots. But... I stopped wearing them because um, they're they're a waterproof boot, and I mean they're not really waterproof. You can step in a in a in a stream or whatever, and your foot's gonna get wet. So, you know, if you're just sloshing through a couple of puddles, it'll keep your feet dry. But um, again, the reason I got rid of those Keens because they smelled horrible. They would never really dry out. Um, you know, if, if you got just super wet, it would take days for them to dry out and they would have this super funky mildewy smell. It actually got to the point where, um, I would take my boots off and I'd be so embarrassed. I would like take them out off outside and just leave them out there. Um, because they just smelled horrible. So I thought, you know, okay, you know what? I'm going to try trail runners. Actually, before I tried trail runners, I bought myself another pair of Keens, the same exact model. And I, I thought I'll just, you know, do the next thousand miles in these. But that pair delaminated in like 150 miles. They actually started falling apart. Pretty inconsistent, Keen. Um, I wasn't a fan before the hike. I liked them because they fit well. And guess what? Yeah, I'm not really a fan still. So... Anyways, after that second pair of Keens, um, everyone was wearing trail runners. So I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to go with a pair of trail runners and just try them out. I was super skeptical because it seemed to me, I'm pretty hard on my shoes and it seemed to me those things would fall apart. So the first pair I bought was a pair of uh, Hoka Speed Goats. And um, those lasted me like 500 miles. I, I went through Pennsylvania, through the rocks up through New York, and those things held up like a champ. After about 500 miles, the sole starts to get kind of slick and, and you lose a lot of tread. So I got rid of those and uh, I was in town and I was going to pick up another pair of Speed Goats. But the outfitter I went to didn't have them in my size or didn't carry them or, or something. So I bought myself uh, a pair of, of Las Sportivas. And um, they're a little bit narrower, but I put a couple of hundred miles on those and um, I started to develop kind of a little hole in, in the side where, where my, uh, the wide part of my foot would kind of stretch it out. And then I would scrape them against rocks and it started to develop a little hole. And, and they were super grippy, really good hiking shoes. They were just maybe a little too narrow for my foot. Luckily, I, I didn't develop any blisters or anything, but um, I knew that I wasn't going to make it the next... Uh, you know, two months or whatever I had left in those Sportivas. So I, I took the plunge and I bought myself a pair of Ultras. 
Teflon uh, actually suggested the Olympus fours. Uh, she had a couple of pair of those and um, she said they were great and asked me if I was ready to join the club. And I said, you know what, why not? So I bought myself a pair of Olympus fours and um, you know what? Best hiking shoe you can buy. In fact, these right here, um, these only have about maybe 150 miles on them, um, but they're still in great shape. They held up really well. Nice wide toe box, a lot of cushion in the heel versus the, uh, like the Lone Peaks that are just kind of a flat sole. So I don't think these are zero drop. If they are, um, you know, they worked out just great for me, but, uh, the Ultra Olympus 4s are definitely my go-to hiking shoe from here on out. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you out. If uh, if you're wondering, uh, you know, what you should bring or um, kind of struggling with, you know, maybe I should take this or maybe I should take that. Remember, don't pack your fears. I packed three different water filtration systems when I left. I had the Sawyer, the Katadin Be Free, and I also had uh, the chemical tablets because I thought, oh man, I just don't want to get Giardia, Giardia and I don't want to get sick. Um, but really, as long as you don't lose it, that Sawyer's, it's all you need. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.